And it has no doubt their crime upon the dawah is great. They should be beaten. They should be whipped and flogged publicly. They should be put on upon donkeys and mules and made to walk around and drive around the city. Well, like, if I had the ability to do so, that's what I would do. I would beat them and put them on donkeys and make them drive up and down the road for 40 days as a punishment because they have made great crimes against the dawah. They've harmed the shabab. And they, Allah, how many years they've pushed it back. The potential for knowledge and the way of the salaf to be spread and disseminated, they've pushed it back by not taking this into consideration. Those who say criticize everyone, Wazali, Fulan, this one, that one, Mubtadir, he's an innovator, this and that, except for Sheikh Fulan. You can't say anything about him. And at the moment you say something about him, you're disrespecting all of the scholars as a whole. The moment you criticize not even one sheikh, one student, a day, they say you're disrespecting all of the brothers and you're waging war against all of the Salafis. But you yourself, how many people have you criticized and repudiated, right or wrong? But you've done it. So why can't I do it now? So you find many people of different colors of hypocrisy and imbalance. The balanced position is if someone of virtue and status makes a mistake, the mistake is to be pointed out and handled and fixed and corrected. But how you do that? Does it have to be public? Do we need 10 people to do it or just one person? Do we disrespect him and disregard his status and his virtue for all of those years, all of those books that he wrote or not? There's a way. I would understand this is a what? There's a way. And most importantly, if you want to be a tough guy and a gangster, then you got to be a tough guy and a gangster all of the time. All of the time. You can't be a tough guy when you're on the offense. And when someone attacks you, you want to be a poet and sell Girl Scout cookies. It doesn't work like that. You are a tough guy refuting people. Jarh wa ta'deel. Refutation. Imam Ahmed said this. Ibn Khali said that. Fulan, Fulan, Fulan. Tayyip. And that also applies when the sword is turned what? Against you. When the scalpel is on your face. You have to take your licks like a man now. And don't run and cower and say he's disrespecting the brothers and he's finding fault in the brothers. So many people, they have this imbalance and they're just, yeah, I need, they have no shame and no shyness. How they talk about other people and when someone talks about them, it's the greatest offense in the book. Or they say, don't talk about no one, don't refute anyone, refutations, we shouldn't be involved in this unless it's something that goes against their agenda. And once more, Allah is my witness that I'm not addressing or speaking to anyone what? Why they come to them? Anyone what? Whoever fits into this category or these categories. So Imam Anawi, he says, anyone who goes against the Sunnah, it should be huh? brought to light. It should be what? Brought to light. Moving forward. Anawi Rahim al Ta'ala then says, وَفِيهِ جَوَازٌ كَارِي عَلَى الْكِبَارِ فِي مَجْمَعٍ مِنَ النَّاسِ He says, and this proves the permissibility of criticizing someone who's of major status, al-kibar, in front of the people. In front of the people. And obviously that's a tough cookie to swallow. All right? And of course you're going to have to use your wisdom. Sometimes it may not be best to say nothing. It may lead to a major embarrassment. He may become offended. It may lead into a bigger problem. So in joining the good and forbidding the evil, refuting mistakes and things like this, it always has to be done in the light of benefit and harm. Pros and cons. Are we understand this? And the people who just want a reckless wrecking ball and just a sledgehammer and never ever take into consideration al masalih wal mafasid, only Allah knows the harm that they have caused. Only Allah knows the harm that they have caused that they have caused. And the people that they've pushed away and ran away from the Sunnah and ran away from beneficial knowledge and learning and benefiting from the ulama. They've pushed them away. How can this not be? And the Prophet he said to his sahaba. That you, he says, from among you are those who push people away. In the minkum la munafirin. He says, from you are those who do what? Push people. They said to the Sahaba. What about us today? So there are some people who say, oh, there's no masalih in mafasid. There's no such thing as that. That's an ikhwani principle. There's no such thing as the pro and the con and the harm and the benefit. That's the way of the ikhwan. That's what they say. And they don't realize how the shaitan has played with them and caused people to turn away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? And it has no doubt their crime upon the dawah is great. 
They should be beaten. They should be whipped and flogged publicly. They should be put on upon donkeys and mules and made to walk around and drive around the city. Well, like, if I had the ability to do so, that's what I would do. I would beat them and put them on donkeys and make them drive up and down the road for 40 days as a punishment because they have made great crimes against the Dawah. They've harmed the Shabab. And they, Allah, how many years they've pushed it back. The potential for knowledge and the way of the Salaf to be spread and disseminated, they've pushed it back by not taking this into consideration. Everyone understand this?